Hi guys, today I will finally be reviewing The Boys Season 2 and before I start, man, it's been a rough day uh, where I live. Like, the snow's been very bad here. <laughs> Even cars weren't, weren't able to drive, but at least the kids are having fun, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, sorry that it took me so long to review The Boys Season 2. To tell you the truth, I don't really enjoy it as much as the first season. I really hope the third season is better and more like the first season because, well, this is also going to be a spoiler review since I've took this long, so... All of it's going to be spoilers. And that means I could get through it, you know, much quicker as well. Yeah, it was still a good season, but... I definitely preferred the first season over this one. <clears throat> because I feel like the, the the most important characters... Well, I'd say Butcher is kind of missing for, through a lot of the episodes in this season. Yeah, he does come back eventually with the crew, but yeah. He's just more focused on his wife since he's he just found out that she's alive, so... It makes sense that he's trying to distance himself from the crew and get closer to his wife. And, you know, with how things ended with season one, with, you know, Homelander taking Butcher to his wife, and then Homelander had a kid with his wife who has powers. Like, man, that ending, <laughs> that was that was a lot. <laughs> that's just going too far. Yeah. That's in my mum's words anyway, because she's watched this show as well. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we kind of get to see what happens afterwards. And for the first episode, we don't even get to see Butcher until the, like the until the like the last moments, because we're thinking like what what even happened to Butcher? Because you know the the team are trying to look for him, like Huey and them. Yeah, they're trying to find out what happened to him, because they had no clue, you know, where he went. <coughs> you know, after everything that happened. Also, in the first episode, um, Starlight's able to expose Vault. Using Compound V to, you know, make superheroes. So, like, that's, like, that's, like, the big thing that happens in the first episode. Because <coughs> even a then nearly spots her, but luckily she she does get some help from that stretchy superhero. I'm not even sure what his name is. If I can even call him a superhero. Like, she basically helps um, start, like, get the information, or leak the information. Then, you know, it's just all over the news. Since the news is the biggest weapon in this season. To taking down people because some of these superheroes are pretty strong to fight so the best way to take them down is by you know the news and stuff and man we get to see a lot more with with vault and also they get like the breaking bad gus actor in the season as well who's the head of vault he's, he's calling all the shots when it comes to you know the vault we also see that doctor who's played by the same guy as valcon in you know gotham we see him again Whatever his name was again, that doctor. Is it like Homelanders? Yeah. I think I think uh, Butcher also talks to him later on in the season two. But by by episode seven he gets killed. Which we get revealed that at the very end, it's, it was actually some woman who they're working with. It was on the same could you say same side as them? No, let's just say they had the same goal. But it's not like Butcher and them knew what she was trying to do, really, because like we've, because also she kills Butcher's, you know, old uh, police partner, detective partner. <coughs> in the first episode, like, he was just like, because, <laughs> like, of course someone dies in front of Huey just like that. And then, you know, just blood all over him, just like with his girlfriend. <clears throat> but yeah, Butcher's nowhere to be seen because, you know, he's dealing with things with, you know, what, what he's just found out. And it just doesn't make sense that way. Why didn't Homeland, Homelander just, you know, let him die in the explosion? And like he was gonna able to kill Homelander in an explosion anyway. <laughs> that wasn't really a good idea. <clears throat> and what else? Well, I guess there's, I guess there's two characters I'd want to mainly talk about. I, I don't know, about, I don't know what I wanted to say because yeah, there's there's um there's a character from season one, um, Lamplighter, who we finally get to see because we didn't really know what happened with him in season one. Like he, like they just said that his character disappeared, and they say that we have. They have no idea what happened with him. And then there's Stormfront. Like, I'm just going to give my thoughts on her because I'd say she's the character I was looking forward to the most. But, you know, because, you know, she had lightning powers and stuff. So, yeah, I was looking forward to seeing what to do with her. Because you know how I am with people with lightning powers. <laughs> like Thor and Storm. But, yeah, there's kind of a twist with her. And since I hadn't read the books, I didn't see that coming. But what should I start with? All right, so instead I'm going to talk about Stormfront first. Since I'm, I'd say I'm kind of disappointed with both of the characters, really. 
we did get some stuff with Lamplighter and, you know, what happened with him and what kind of stuff that he did and why he disappeared in the first place. But yeah, I'm just going to talk about uh, Stonefront first, since she was the one that I was looking forward to, but then, you know, what's revealed with her character. And since I didn't read the comics, I didn't really know what to expect. As you can see on the right, like, that's how Stormfront was in the comics. Like, she, you know, she was a male instead of a, you know, female. Because also, um, Stormfront has a relationship with um, Homelander, which was uh, a bit weird. Especially with everything that we find out in episode 3. Also, you can see, you can kind of see a familiar symbol. Yep. So, basically, Stormfront was a Nazi. So, that it kind of shows what kind of character she's going to be. Because in the moment where... Yeah, when um, the Asian girl's uh, brother, which, you know, we see her brother in this um, season because I think they find a soup terrorist area or something like that. A terrorist area, which they find out about. They, they go inside it, then they find her brother. And, you know, he kind of attacks them, but then, you know, the sister captures, captures him, yeah. So he doesn't, you know, endanger anyone. And, oh yeah, uh, basically, what Stormfront does, like, at the time when she's chasing after him in episode 3, because they're on the one, because their goal was to get um, the Asian girls, because um, she hasn't really got a proper name, so I, I just feel like we need to find out her name at this point. Did they even give her give her name in this season? Because the way how I was watching this season is, it was like every 3-4 weeks I'd watch an episode, because, like I said, I wasn't enjoying, enjoying the season as much, and I was watching a lot more shows. At the same time, like, you know, Power Book 2 and everything. Yeah, what I've been reviewing. Fear the Walking Dead, which, wow. <laughs> I'm surprised how good Season 6, you know, has been. So, yeah, I'm not sure if they actually revealed her name. Sometimes I just kind of call her random names, like Kimiko or something. Because <laughs> sometimes I just remember that. Have they even given her name? Like, in the show, yeah. Like, I feel like, we, like in Season 3, we, they need to give her a name. If they hadn't already. Because I, I, just, I just don't know at this point. <laughs> Yeah, but Stormfront basically is a Nazi, meaning like in the scene where <clears throat> she's chasing after, well, the Asian girl, I think, and her brother, you basically see, um, yeah, Stormfront c c killing all these black people, yeah. So that kind of reveals like that she doesn't like other races and stuff because, you know, she's a Nazi. And the way how she kills the Asian girl's brother, which, you know, he dies. It's just so brutal, and the things that she says about him. Oh yeah, obviously a racist. <laughs> oh god, because I was I wasn't expecting that. Because like I said, I, I have read the comics, and I guess they make it more obvious in the comics. I'm not sure if that's his. I'm not sure if that's Stormfront's main outfit in the comic, or he wears something else. Because come on, it wouldn't it wouldn't be that obvious that he's a Nazi. Because I didn't I didn't see that coming. Like, I was thinking like this was gonna be a character that I really liked, but man, the reveal <laughs> in episode three. Yeah, but also she kind of makes Homelander jealous. Well, first, the first thing she, that um, that Stormfront does to piss Homelander off is stealing his uh, soup terrorist kill. So she kind of gets all the glory for that. And then she, she kind of gets really popular with uh, the people and, you know, makes a lot of fans, probably more than Homelander. And then they start to work together, so, you know, because so Homeland is less mad at her or something. Just the way how she tries to play things. She also, she also knows that Starlight, you know, leaked out, you know, the the thing that, that makes the soups. That she couldn't really tell because, you know, Starlight gets information about, you know, Stonefront being a Nazi. So if that came out, yeah, she'd be screwed, which, you know, it does by the end of the season. <laughs> which yeah if she wasn't because her power is basically like she's kind of would you say immortal i mean what happens to her at the end i don't know if she can repair herself i don't i don't really know how that works since she's been alive for like over 100 years or something whenever she was born she's definitely been alive for a long time also there's this person who who kind of gives them the lead to start building a case against her anyway Especially there was this woman who, like, when she was a little girl, her brother was driving her home, but then, you know, Stormfront in her original identity, is it Liberty or something? 
she basically was beating her brother to death because you know trying to blame a crime on him you know because you know i just thought well like i said she was a nazi so yeah and just the way how she beats him to death and then the amount of money that they give to cover well that vault give the family to cover what happened like only two thousand and you know saying that her brother's her brother's life was only worth two thousand and stuff but she couldn't really talk about it otherwise possibly liberty could come after her but yeah liberty is kind of viewed as a criminal after after that situation so then she just goes into hiding i guess and then she comes back as stormfront in you know the modern day <coughs> but with that information that uh, milk and it's milk huey and um starlight who you know venture out to you know find this woman who te- who tells them this story and then they kind of get information everything that they need and then later down the line they you know leak it and then Stormfront's just <laughs> when she gets exposed yeah let's just say she's not happy also Stormfront has been well this kind of goes into the you know the lamplighter story so i guess we're going to start talking about lamplighter now so yeah i was kind of disappointed with her character and yeah let's just get into the you know lamplighter now all right, so I'm talking about Lamplighter now. You may recognize this actor from um, the X-Men movies, which I grew up with. Yeah, he played as Iceman, and in this, he's Lamplighter. So instead of ice powers, he has, like, fire powers, which is cool. <laughs> he kind of feels more like uh, one of the people who he took on in X-Men 2 and 3. It's like he's kind of more like him with what they do with his character anyway. Because the reason why I think Lamplighter... Because Lamplighter was working with, um, is it, um, I'm not sure what her name is again. Is it Amanda or something? Who Butcher works with? What he gets all his jobs from. I don't know if I'm getting the characters mixed up or not. But yeah, uh, that older lady who Butcher works with, like, she was on a job with uh, Lamplighter. Like, it's kind of funny. There's like a funny scene where, you know, it's a, fla- it's a Frenchie flashback. Because Frenchie basically had these people who he was with. It seems like they got high together and they, one time they did, a, they did a heist together. And it all went wrong. But the only way um, Frenchie could get out is if he works with uh, this woman. I don't know if it's Amanda. I don't know if I'm getting mixed up. Because otherwise he'd be set, he'd be uh, serving 25 years for the heist and what he did. And his friends would also be locked up. It's when he bo- it's when uh, Amanda brought the friends in when, which he decided to work with Amanda. So when he's on this job, he sees a um, lamplighter killing these people that he was forced to kill and French is just like following him and Lampletter knew that he was following following him as well so he kind of has like some hatred uh, for Lampletter Frenchie when he sees him he just wants to kill him because there's a scene where they go to this hospital <coughs> to get something important for you know the story then you know he runs into Lampletter also Stormfront's there as well she kind of knows about Lampletter I guess it's like Lamplighter, Lamplighter um, basically kills off the people who are not really cooperating with uh, Vault and, you know, what Stormfront's saying to him. Because they're trying to make, like, these new soups, but more like weaponized soups or something. So they have all these soups locked in this place, which, I think that's episode six, which is also my favourite episode of the season, I'd say, with what happens with, you know, when they break out. <clears throat> and everything goes on. <laughs> Yeah, when they're trying to escape, once they got what they need. And then Lamplighter, you know, sees them and tries to kill them, but then, you know, everything that happens, yeah, they're just trying to fight them off. Because there was this, like, one woman who has the ability to just kill people and just, like, putting her fist together. Like, that's a crazy ability. <laughs> and then there's this, oh, that guy with who gets milk and he wraps him around with his, oh, I don't even want to, I don't even want to say it, man. Oh my god, that's just a nasty scene. That's all I'll say with that one. And there's that guy who spits acid. He kind of reminded me of Todd a little bit, but instead of a long tongue, he kind of spits acid. And the way how they defeat him is, you know, basically puts the acid on himself and, you know, his face just burns like, oof. Yeah, there's a lot. There's still a lot of brutal kills in, you know, The Boy Season 2, which is a good thing. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <coughs> but they basically all escape together anyway. And before they escape, like, Stormfront actually comes back to, you know, check, you know, what happened. She actually takes out a few of them as well. Also, Hugh was there, and one of them actually gets outside, and 
hits the fan that Huey's in, I think. And then Huey's kind of badly injured, so Butcher and Starlight, which, you know, because Starlight and Butcher don't really get along that much, well, mainly because of Butcher, but eventually they, they start to see eye to eye with each other. Start to bond, I guess. Once they get Huey to the hospital, anyway. <clears throat> but, yeah. Basically, after, you know, Lamplight, you know, talks with Stormfront, like, they just leave together. Also, when Amanda sees him, like, she just wants to shoot him for what happened last time with, you know, those kids, what he burned alive. I don't really blame her, everything that happened. But, you know, um, who was it? Was it Frenchie who wanted to, you know, not kill him so he can be, like, he can be, like, a witness or something? Whatever their plans were for him. So they decide to keep him alive, even though at this point, Lamplight just wish he was dead. <clears throat> because him just living is just, like, torment to him. Yeah. So, but then, like, the way how they finish things with his character, basically, um, Starlight actually gets captured, because, like, she basically got rid of her chip, and while on a... When she was doing something, she basically gets captured, but, well, when she's uh, visit visiting her mum, well, I think her mum just finds her, and then, you know, Black Noir, who's been watching, well, first, he went after the butcher, but then he kind of had information that would, you know, screw over Homelander. Was it the one where it shows the pl you know the plane scene in season one where Homeland just let m hundreds of uh, passengers die, and that other superhero, that other lady superhero, was there too, and she kind of has that footage as well, which they used that for you know the end because if they showed that like Homeland would be screwed as well like their ultimate hero, and if Homeland did that he'd probably kill everyone but then he'd be alone and he doesn't want to be alone, but yeah. Basically, uh, what happens when uh, Starlight gets captured, since I need to talk about Lamplighter before I talk about, you know, that scene. <clears throat> yeah, Lamp Lamp Lamplighter it basically helps Huey uh, break out Starlight. And afterwards, I guess, he, when he sees the statue, and he sees that he's not, like, his statue's not there anymore. I don't know, he just, he just feels like, because he does, like, before then, he talks about his father and how, you know, he had so much hopes for him and how, what he must think of him now. And at that point, he probably was just like so depressed, so he basically burns himself alive. And then he would just text his hand so he can, you know, rescue Starlight's mother because, you know, Black Noir captured them. <clears throat> yeah, it kind of sucks how the end things with him. Yep, so that's uh, that's two disappointing captures for me because I did want more from them. Well, uh, I say Stormfront's the most disappointing, but, well, for people who've read the comics, they already knew what was going to happen. Well, they, 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 yeah, they already knew what was going to happen, but I didn't, so, yeah. But Lamplighter, the way how he just kills himself, like, I wish he went out better than that. He, yeah, he helped Starlight, but, yeah, he, he helped Huey get inside the building. But come on, you shouldn't, <laughs> why did he have to die like that? I'd have him getting killed by Stormfront or something, then mm, how he decides to go out, just killing himself, burning himself alive, yeah. But I'm just going to move on now. Alright, so I'm going to talk about everything that happens with Butcher, since he's very distant from his crew, and the way Harry just treats him, just because he's just friends with him. Because at this point, the only thing he cares about is his wife, for, for like, four or five episodes, like, he's just distant, he's distant, he's distant, yeah, distancing himself uh, from his crew, sorry, <laughs> I can't even talk right now, sorry. <laughs> That's, and he's trying to get, you know, with Becca. Well, he's trying to break Becca out of the place, but, you know, Becca wants to be with Ryan, her son, which, you know, she's struggling to keep Ryan away from Homelander, especially when Stormfront comes into the picture. It's like she's slowly trying to replace, you know, Becca as the mum, but, you know. And then there's, like, a scene where Becca gets exposed for lying to her son saying that there wasn't really all these cities and houses around, but that actually is when Homelander, you know, flies him up. Because, yeah, the way how Homelander treated him before, like, yeah, but I wasn't really a big fan of Homelander. Like, how he tries to make him fly, but he just, like, pushes him off a roof, his own son, yeah. So he just kind of hits his dad and stuff. I wouldn't say hate, just dislikes him, I, I guess. Because Homelander is a douche. Mm-mm. <clears throat> Yeah, he does try to make up things with him by taking him out to this vault land or something. Then he sees, then there's these, these people who, you know, see Homelander and Stormfront, who are big fans, and they start to get pictures, but then, you know, Ryan's just 
it's just maybe you could say he's getting claustrophobic or something. Seeing so, all these people, then later on, um, <clears throat> Homelander tells a story about because um, I don't want to talk about too much about this stuff because we talk about more butcher and because he has stuff with his family that you know comes into the light as well. So yeah, and to talk about that, but yeah, Homelander basically tells a story about how he went for the same thing when he was a big when he was in a big crowd. He just flew away and he was just like crying. <coughs> so he's basically just trying to bond with his son. But you know how things go later on. Especially when we find out that Stonefront's a Nazi. <laughs> and just those memes. And you used to see memes with... Because um, she had just like some... I don't know. Imagine if the same meme editor <laughs> did that to her. That's Because she has like a, her own meme editor or something. But imagine if her own meme editor did that to her. Like, that would be so funny. I would, I would even dare because imagine if she could, she came for me. <laughs> Lol. Because, <clears throat> yeah, I need to end. Well, when he finds out about... Well, I'm just going to talk about Butcher first with his family because, yeah, some of his family comes into the season with his mum phoning about um, the dad having cancer and that he hasn't really got long left. And so he has a little chat with his dad and we kind of find out that his dad used to beat him up he also also butcher kind of talks a bit about his brother and the way how his dad just just viewed him as a weak person and he made butcher strong and then you know his you know butcher just hates <clears throat> his dad for how he treated both of them and butcher kind of blames um you know his brother's death on his dad with you know with everything that happened so at this point, he just he just despises his dad, and I think his mother, you know, made him meet with his dad just to show how pathetic he was at his final days, and that you should be a better man, stuff like that. Yeah, especially if he ever has a kid, so he doesn't be like that to his kid, which you know, why? Right because at the end, so yeah, I'm just gonna talk about the ending now, because there is there is a few more things that I need to talk about, but yeah, I'm just gonna talk about the ending, then I'll just. You know, say a few things extra, and then I'm just gonna, you know, say my final thoughts and what, you know, like the waiting and stuff. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, for season three. But yeah, <clears throat> so in the end, um, basically Becca loses um Ryan when Homelander and Stormfront, you know, take him away. And I think that's like, at the same time when he takes him to the vault land and then everything else. And then, I guess I'll just talk about the house scene because Butcher basically wants uh put to put uh becca and well he doesn't really care about ryan but you know you know how much becca actually cares about ryan since because at this point because normally like becca wouldn't have gone to butcher especially since that's what she did in the first place because instead of going to butcher because she kind of knows how much hatred he, you know she has for homelander and how dark it was making him so with with her son well at this point she didn't really have a choice because she made the one choice trusting Vault before. So this time she wanted to go to, you know, Butcher. But then Butcher's also working with Vault this time. But in the end, he decides not to, even though he's willing to make that choice. <clears throat> but he basically goes back on that because, he, you know, he, he makes a promise, but then he swears to his brother's... He swears to his brother that he won't break that promise, so he doesn't, yeah. Because basically the plan was that he basically takes, I guess, Becca and the son to Vault. So they'll be in like protection, and then he'll be able to get something that will screw over Homelander, basically something like that. Yeah, with the you know Vault Boss, that's that's the deal that he makes with him. You know the ghost actor from Breaking Bad. Since I forget what name he has in this show. <laughs> yeah. So they kind of discuss with that. That's their plan. And then when the when we get to the final scenes, you know Butcher kind of makes a trap for Homelander, which will lure him out. And then while he's away, you know, Butcher will go for his son, Butcher and Becca. <coughs> and then I think Stormfront kind of comes back after what happened with, you know, that information getting leaked about her being a Nazi. And then she kind of she kind of fights the whole gang, basically. And we also get, we kind of get a scene that's way better than that endgame scene with all those, you know, with all the Marvel heroines all together. That, that scene was kind of yeah, I'm one of the people who thought that scene was kind of cringy the way how they did it. And compare it to like a scene from The Mandalorian season two, you know, where we see 
you know, three of the badass females fighting together. Like, I prefer that scene, but then this scene in um, The Boy Season 2, yeah, I was just like, yeah! <laughs> like, how to just wreck in Stormfront. Yeah. That was that, that was definitely a better scene. <clears throat> Even then, the Mandalorian scene as well, which, that scene was pretty badass too. Yeah. Seeing them all work together in that scene, that was awesome. <clears throat> but eventually, um... Stormfront is able to get to Ryan, but then Becca comes at the same time, and then man, the way how things go, because Becca basically is getting killed by Stormfront, and then you know Ryan tries to help with his laser eyes, because he's also getting forced to get get taken by Stormfront as well. I'm not sure if Butcher was around at that moment. He was he was close anyway, I think. <coughs> But Ryan tries to save his mom, but he does take out Stormfront. Like she's just like crisp at that point. <laughs> just uh, she just keeps repeating these words in um a German language. Yeah. And then, you know, but she just yeah, just yeah, that scene. It's pretty sad. Cause in season one, his goal was to avenge his wife because, you know, he thought she died and he finds her again. And then when we get to this scene, she's dying again, which sucks. He's losing her again. But this time it's permanently. But then she makes a... Then, you know, Becca wants him to promise that, you know, that he'll look after Ryan. Because um, Butcher, you, we all know that Butcher doesn't really like soups. And he was kind of said some bad things about, you know, Ryan before. But I think this time for, for Becca, he's going to do what he can. Even he's kind of grown with um, Starlight because he never liked any soups at all. And... For him to take in Starlight, well, they kind of took in the, the Asian girl as well, which, you know, she kind of has powers, but, yeah. <clears throat> it's kind of come a long way, so, he, you know, when she dies, he does he does look after Wayne afterwards, yeah. So that, that's what kind of happens with his character. Also, Homelander does come back after, because uh, the people who, the vault, that these vault soldiers kind of were supposed to get Wayne, but instead, since Butcher doesn't, decides to betray them, basically, and not stick with the deal because he wants to stick with what he said with his wife the promise that he made you know homelander comes back as well <laughs> after he got loaded in that trap and then he just kills all them soldiers and he just has blood all over him then he come he comes to butcher but he can't really do anything because he kind of has a backup plan as well which will you know leak all the information with what he's done and that plane scene as well leaving those people to die because <clears throat> people just view him as a villain at that point <clears throat> and that's kind of how it ends with um, Butcher's story and Homelander's not able to touch him because he'll be screwed if he does <laughs> he'll be all alone because they were just, villain, just, they were just um, viewing, view him as a villain basically yeah and then the way how the end off ends with Homelander <laughs> a bit cringe and the way, and how he has to um, say those things about Stormfront being the actual traitor because you know before uh, Starlight was viewed as a traitor, but then like, they let her back into the ranks. So, and if I was Starlight, I'd even I would even want to be around Homelander, but he can't really do anything. Otherwise, he'd be screwed anyway. So, <laughs> they kind of got something on him for once instead of Homelander having things on all these other characters, like that um, Wonder Woman girl. <laughs> I just called her the Wonder Woman girl. You know, she was kind of like held hostage in a way. How she how she can't really make a false move, or I should be screwed with her and her girlfriend. And also the things that she had to do with, you know, gay rights or something. Like, the image that she was doing, she wasn't really a big fan of that. <coughs> but she was getting forced to do these things because of Homelander anyway. Yeah. Because she wanted, you know, her relationship with her girlfriend to be private. But then, you know, Homelander, once he found out, like, just tried to make, make her be more open and stuff. But then, you know, she kind of gets one on him. You know, at the end of the season. So he's basically, like, in the position that... Everyone else was early in the show, yeah, which is cool. And then that person who was helping them, who was winning for Congress, like she was the one who was kind of exploding people's heads throughout the show, especially in episode seven. Because I think uh, that doctor and everyone was going to expose Vault, and I think she's kind of working with the Vault boss, and you know kills them, kills them. She even kills one of the people who was helping out Deep, which yeah, Deep as well. Okay, I'm so I'm just gonna. Since I'm talking about fins, just extra fins, yeah, I'm just going to finish up with, you know, another slide. 
so yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of finishing up now, so yeah, I was saying things about Deep anyway, the guy on the left, which we all know, <laughs> who's basically the Aquaman ripoff, because we kind of know how things are going for him, like he got kicked out the seven, he joined his program to make him look good again, he gets to survive and stuff, he basically does things to get him back into the seven, but eventually it doesn't really work out, even because even A Train, who kind of works with the same guy, because it because uh, Deep kind of introduced him to this guy, but then A Train gets in instead, which is kind of funny. He kind of also helps uh, Starlight get the rest of the information to expose Stormfront as well, because it didn't, didn't really do much with Deep and um, A Train in this season compared to the last season, which it's kind of obvious why A Train was a big part in you know the first season with you know what happened with the way how they started the show, yeah. With who is go for getting killed by a train by accident, if you want to call it that. <laughs> also, Black Noir. What happened to Black Noir by the end? Well, because I know that um the the woman do- <laughs> Wonder Woman rip off. I don't know what to call. It. Sometimes I forget her name, so I just call it that. But it, even though she did have a bit more focus in this season compared to the last season, <coughs> with her girlfriend and everything, what was happening there? Yeah. Because she kind of knows, um, basically, Black Noir's weakness. He has, like, an allergy. And she kind of, you know, took advantage of that. Because she does help out a lot in this season. She she kind of saves the characters, like, two, three times. She even, stays, she even saves Starlight as well. She was more of a bigger ally in this season. Yeah. <coughs> Be a train we kind of knew that he had a heart problem. And he was taking this drink that was... Helping him, you know, get around, basically. But he still wasn't able to do too much with winning in this season, anyway. But it still kind of helped out in the end, too. Because this Stormfront, I feel like, was the biggest threat in this season with what she was trying to do. And make these, I guess, soldiers who are more like her and Homelander, I guess. And, you know, being a Pacific racist as well. But yeah, it's just it's just good that they get rid of her. Cause she's not really a villain that you like to hate. <laughs> yeah. Just hate, basically. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Cause Adrian and everyone hated her too, so yeah, they need to get rid of her. I guess Homelander kinda liked her. Because he doesn't move on quick. <laughs> but yeah. I guess that's pretty much it then. I don't want it to be too much longer, so, yeah. I'll just wrap up here. So, for season three, because I know that Jensen, who plays as Dean in Supernatural, is going to be in, in the third season. I'm just, I'm just not sure what kind of character he's going to be. Maybe he'll be a soup. Maybe he'll just be a normal person. I'm looking forward to see, you know, what kind of character he's going to be in the show. Because since Supernatural ended its 50th season, and it's not going to be any more seasons, you know... Both uh, Gerard and Jensen have moved on to different shows now. I'm not sure what the other show that uh, Gerard's in right now. I'm not really sure what that's about, but I just know that I just know that um, Jensen's going to be in the boys season three, which I'm looking forward to. That the Bobby actor was actually in this season for like two episodes, though. So I kind of wish we got to see more from him. Yeah, maybe in season three, but we'll see. Because I haven't really got much to say about him. But it'd be cool if we get to see, you know, Dean and Bobby interacting with each other. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. And what's Homelander gonna do? Like, is he gonna find a way to get out of his out of his situation? Since he kinda has something over his head, so he can't really burst out like he usually does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause if he does, he's gonna get exposed. So let's see if we can find a way out of that. But yeah, I guess that's it for my Boy season two. Sorry I took so long to review it. It's finally done now. I can finally move on. Yeah. And I guess I think I think in my notifications it says something about uh Walking Dead pictures and trailer and stuff. So because I know that uh, the Walking Dead's coming back in February. I guess I'll have another review for season one. Season two, I guess I will be reviewing that, but I need to know the release date again for season ten C. Yep, but I guess that's it for The Boy Season 2. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.